to successfully observe the rituals and the fasting of the month of Ramadan. As we proceed through the month of Ramadan, as the days of this month is going to pass, we should start feeling and witnessing the light from the deeds of this month and the speciality of the time of this month itself in our self. You should see the reflection of fasting and siyam within yourself. One of the signs of acceptance of deeds is a practical reflection. As for the Salat, if you can recall, they went and asked Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. They said, Ya Mawlai, how should we know, how can we indicate, how can we test and examine that if our Salat is accepted? Imam Sadiq alayhi salam answers this question referring to a verse of Quran in accordance to which offering prayer salat is defined. What is that verse? That verse is this Audu Billahman as Shaitan al Rajim in the Salata Tanha Anil Fahshae Wal Munkar. Indeed, salat should stop you should make you avoid doing evil of all its kinds. Then Imam says, look and see if your salat is stopping you from doing things that are wrong, that are evil, that cause the wrath of our Creator. If it is so, then it means it's, your salat is accepted. If it is not so, then be certain that your Salat is not accepted. So for those who have a concern of whether or not our fastings have been accepted so far, look and see, has it have practical reflection into your daily life? Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this siyam and this fasting should yield an increase of taqwa. Kutub alaykum as siyam kama kutub ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. So we should see the reflect of it. We should see the impact of this fasting at this very beginning of the month. If we do not see an impact, it means we have to try harder. Maybe it's the purity of intentions. Maybe there are things that are distracting us that we have to avoid. The Holy Quran, Audhu Billah, Min ash shaitanir Surat al Imran, Juz number four, which is the content that you will recite, inshallah, tomorrow. Wa ati Allah wa Rasul laallakum turhamun. Be obedient to Allah. And then, in order to tie the hands of those kuffar, who might later on come and claim that we are obeying Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it more specification. It says, Ati'u Allah, and these two are together. Wa Ati'u Rasul. Because if it was saying only Ati'u Allah, then later on the kuffar and some other groups would have come and say, well, we are obe obeying Allah. We are not obeying you, Ya Rasulullah. But these come together, meaning that 
Obedience to Rasulullah is absolutely not separated, not differentiated from obedience to Allah. And same reasoning applies to obeying the commands of Waliullah. We can prove it by many other verses and notes. So what happens? لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that maybe the rahmah and the mercy of Allah includes you. And then the continuation. وَصَارِعُوا And by this verse, by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, وَصَارِعُوا Accelerate, run towards إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Towards forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to be forgiven? The path of it is this. Do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger from now on. Vajannatin. What is this? The finest level of maghfirah and forgiveness of Allah? It is the heaven. Ardu has samawat. The area of this heaven is all the skies. This is for us to understand. Because our understanding is limited. Our rationality and wisdom is limited to our own capacity. Ardu has samawat. This entire earth is spinning around itself. And it also rotates around the sun. And all this entire galaxy is also spinning around itself and is moving a direction. And it has been moving a direction for all the years of creation. Just think about it. And all of this is called the skies. Ardu has samawat. that this heaven is prepared for those who are lil muttaqin siyam is supposed to yield in taqwa and then taqwa was defined yesterday if you remember this book of guidance is only the book of guidance for Muttaqeen, alladhina yu'manuna bil qaib. And in that, in that hadith, we mentioned that yu'manuna bil qaib, aw iman bil qaib, having faith in the unseen, is having faith in the imam that is in the period of occultation. Al iman bil hujjat al ghaiba. Right? And then in here, for those who still have ambiguations about taqwa, then this verse is of Surah Al Imran. Ati Allah wa Ati Al Rasul. And then wasaru ila maghfiratin min Rabbikum wa jannatin arduha al samawat wa iddat lil muttaqin. Brothers and sisters, taqwa is nothing, especially in our time, but by knowing who our Imam of time is and trying to be obedient to him, striving to know him, striving to know his preferences, striving to discover his commands, and adhering to take actions in regards or in accordance to his opinion, to his preference. This is taqwa. This is the right definition of taqwa in our time today. And it has been the right definition of taqwa throughout all days. But in our time, the tests and the Tribulations that we are going through is very unique. 
inshallah in the coming nights i will focus more on what are the tests and tribulations that we face especially in the west and how can we assist our imam of time by knowing him better if you don't know him well how can you assist him right if you don't know what he really wants from you what do you want to offer to him you want to sacrifice your skills your wealth your whatever that you have in this dunya while not knowing who you're sacrificing it for then even if you do it you'll do it the wrong way you'll harm his cause as in the duas of this month you say فَإِنْ لَمْ أَعْرِفْ حُجَّتَكَ ضَلَلْتُ عَنْ دِينِي If I don't get to know your hujja, which is the imam of our time, I will go astray from my deen. ضَلَلْتُ عَنْ دِينِي I might be praying over and over. I might be reciting the Holy Quran jaws after jaws. Completing Khatmul Quran after, one after the other. Yet, I will not be able to assist. I'll not be able to become a hand of aid to the cause of my Imam, which is expected from us, not just from me, from each and every one of us. And this month of Ramadan should prepare us for that. This month of Ramadan should prepare us for the dhuhr. Look at the du'as of this month. Look at this du'a al-iftitah. After all those hamds and praisings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the very end it says Allahumma inna nashku alayka faqda nabiyyana. Oh Allah I complain to you. Meaning that I'm not satisfied. I've not got along with the fact that my imam is in the period of occultation. That I'm away from my imam. That I've decided to be away from my imam. This is not normal to me. Allahumma inna nashku ilayka faqda nabiyyina wa ghaybata waliyyina. We complain to you that we didn't get to see the Holy Prophet. And we were born and raised in a time of occultation. The haq is in minority. The enemies are too many. Month of Ramadan should change this entire platform. Should bring revolution to this entire platform. Recite the salawat please. اللهم صل على محمد محمد وعجل فرجه. All these salawats show that uh, we should uh, give you guys a break until iftar. <laughs> Please recite a loud salawat. اللهم صل على محمد وعجل فرجه. أيها الناس Back to the Sha'baniya sermon of the Holy Prophet. Ayyuhan nas, inna anfusakum marhunatun ba'amalikum. O people, truly your soul are dependent upon your deeds. And to set this dependency free, to get rid of this dependency, فَفَكُّوهَا بِاسْتَغْفَارِكُمْ Free yourself from these chains by doing istighfar. Sometimes when we read these sentences or, or when we face these phrases, we might ask ourselves, Oh, what have I done wrong to do istighfar for? I have a very clean record. 
அந்த லைனில் சொல்கிறார் யூனோ தேர் இஸ் நத்திங் யூ நோ ஐ ஐ பின் நோர்மோ திஸ் இஸ் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி ட்ரிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஷைத்தான் டு மேக் யூ ஃபோர் கெட்ஸ் வாட் யூ ஹவ் டான் ராங் Imam Rada alayhi salam in a hadith says Allahumma salli ala Muhammad that there are 10 signs 10 signs for completion of wisdom and aql I'll share two of them with you It says yastaqillu kathira al-khayr min nafsi wa yastaksiru qalila al-khayr min ghayri When he remembers his own good deeds, he counts them as nothing. That's a sign of wisdom. He says, I've done nothing when it comes to good deeds. To Allah, as for ibadat, and to others. And when it comes to remembering the good deeds of others, the khair from others, he remembers. exaggerates about it he sees as big oh i can't forget that brother of mine has given me a right to masjid one night when i didn't have a car man it happened 20 years ago i still can't forget it what does a jahil do and ignorant do does the opposite he forgets the good acts of others easily easily yet he remembers the small tiny things he has done for others greatly and forever and permanently when it comes to conflicts and fights arguments inside home god forbid or outside the very first thing an ignorant will mention is this i am the one who did that for you at that point and the same mentality applies to our relation with our lord we forget all the good he has given us all the blessings he has showered us with showered us with yet it's only sufficient to face a small tiny bit of pain then god forbid we start into a, we start a big conflict with allah Oh Allah you don't like me. When you want to do istighfar remember that. In this month that we have been asked we have been commanded by the holy prophet to frequently do istighfar. Remember that there will be a day called the day of judgment. And all of your actions will come handy. you'll be faced you'll be given you'll be shown the spectrum of your entire life from birth to death you see everything just like these panoramic images right you see everything from one end to the other and then your amal and deeds will be compared will be scaled by the amal of who is mizan al amal does anyone know Recite a salawat, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Amir al-Mu'minin is the scale of deeds. Mizan al-A'mal. Oh, there is no way I can get there. That's why I need the mercy of Allah. That is the peak that we should have at least got closer to. when you do istighfar remember that you are in debt you are dependent to your deeds fafakuha break these chains free yourself by istighfar in this month of ramadan wa duhurukum your shoulder your burden thaqilatun is heavy your load is magnificently heavy من اوزاركم with your sins فخففوا عنها بطول سجودكم empty this burden see how the image 
The Holy Prophet is drawing a beautiful, is drawing a beautiful image. He says, and then free yourself or empty this burden by tula sujood. Spend some time. You're done eating sahari. I promise you're not going to face hunger. You're not going to be in the state of famine. You're not in Yemen. Spend some time after, after you had a light suhoor in sajda. This is the recommendation of the Holy Prophet. Of course, we pray for the people of Yemen and the people of Palestine nonstop. We can't forget, forget them at all. And inshallah for the freedom of these people from the oppression that they are facing, please recite the salawat. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad. But the Holy Prophet says, Betul al sujood. Long sajdas, extended sajdas. Just say subhanallah over and over. But spending time, Betul al sujood. Wa'lamu anna Allah ta'ala dhikruhu. Aqsama bi'izzati, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sworn by his mighty that an la yu'adzab al-musallin. That he will not punish the true musallin, the ones who establish prayers, the ones who pray. It's been said that if two rak'ah of salat is accepted, you will not touch the hellfire. If two rak'ah of our salat in this entire life is accepted, you will not be thrown into the hellfire. Wasajideen and those who do prostration, those who perform sajda. Allah wa Allah yurabahum binar that he will not frighten him with the he, he will not frighten them with the hellfire. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسِ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ On that day when all humankind, when all humankind, regardless of their hierarchy, their social status, where they came from, they will all stand responsible before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds. أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ مَنْ فَطَرَ مِنْكُمْ صَائِمًا مُؤْمِنًا فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ Whoever gives iftar, whoever brings another mu'min into the circle, because that's the purpose. Remember, we mentioned this entire month of Ramadan is a social practice. It's a social practice that we are all doing it together. Maybe in the other times of the year, individually, on the timing of our preference and convenience, we do observe mustahab fastings but in the month of ramadan we do it all together the holy prophet in here points out on the importance of it'am giving food invite others into the circle this sitting together and eating together brings the heart so much closer whether it's inside the family structure or the community structure It um, is very important. During the time of COVID, if you remember, in man, many of the centers were firstly were closed. Some of those centers who decided, who insisted to remain open, they had canceled having food together. And this wasn't only limited to United States, even where I came from, Iran, and back in Qom, the same thing applied, was, was there too. So I went to one of the scholars at that point. I said, oh, I know a gathering, a majlis, a program that they have decided to give uncooked meal so that you take it home and cook it yourself. And he said, don't go there. <laughs> Find out somewhere that you can sit on a tablecloth together and eat together. That it all is really important. That eating together will bring the heart so much closer. 
That humbleness that you're starting to eat together, sitting next to each other, breaking your fast together is very important. It's very, very crucial. Then the Holy Prophet says, Whoever gives iftar to a faster or an observer of fasting, he shall be awarded. He'll be freed from the hellfire by just this action. This points out and highlights the importance of having iftar together. If you can't come to the center for any reason that you have, and you're watching us live, try to have iftar with your family members. Outside of the month of Ramadan, try to have your meals together with your family members. If you can't come to the masjid for the congregation salat, try to have salat al jamaah at home together. Some of these etiquettes will teach the children and will raise them way more than numerous classes. The intensification of family bonds. The intensification of faith bonds is very important. And the month of Ramadan can, can get us closer to that, inshallah. That unity that has become the number one concern within our communities that can easily get torn apart is something that we need to fix in this month of Ramadan easily this center goes to conflict with another center and a big donor who is alhamdulillah blessed with wealth goes and open up his own individual center in another place I visited a city in California, I don't want to name it, but the brothers told me, they said we have about 35 Islamic Shia centers in this city that are most of the times empty. And we do not even have enough scholars for these centers. This is one of the issues and conflicts and let's say crisis to come in future. Because what happens to the youth? They look at these conflicts and fights and arguments back and forth, and they're like, what? They're like, leave it all alone. I don't need new headache. The converts come in, they don't feel welcomed. They're like, leave me alone. I practice Islam on my own, and I'm going to be way happier. Avoiding headaches. Month of Ramadan can bring us back together. Is a mean for us to intensify unity. And then the Holy Prophet goes on with explanation. I don't want to, inshallah, focus on that part. I escape, I, I skip part of it. You can, inshallah, definitely I recommend myself and all of you to read through the, this khutbah of the Holy Prophet, especially on these beginning days of the month of Ramadan. And then all of a sudden, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam asks the Holy Prophet. He says, Ya Rasulallah, Ya Rasulallah, who, just see, make sure you know, be aware that who is asking the question and who is responding. It's Amir al-Mu'minin on one side and the Holy Prophet on the other side. Ya Rasulallah, ma afdalul a'mal fi hadha shahr What is the best thing that we could do in this month? What is the best thing? Not reading the rest of khutbah, we might expect the Holy Prophet would say, do Salatul Layl or pray 1,000 rak'ah in night. He doesn't say that. Do this, donate $1 million to the Islamic center that is next to you. Do this, do that. The Holy Prophet says, Al-Wara'u an maharam Allah. The best of the deeds in this month of Ramadan is continuously 
placing yourself in that state of refrainment from what Allah has marked to be unlawful. What is not permissible is something that you have to be in this state of constant avoiding. This is what the definition of wara is. Wara is more than taqwa. It is that constant state of being alert to avoid from maharam Allah. Ya Abu al-Hasan, the best deed in this month is abstinence from what Allah has forbidden. And by fasting, we can reach that. Or I should say, we must reach that level. That should be a milestone that we should, inshallah, aim for. Recite another salawat, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil faraja. I pointed on some of the recommendations and practical suggestions of Ayatollah Kashmiri. Uh, in fact, only one of them yesterday, per what time allowed us, and that was quality over quantity. Islam is a religion of quality, and uh, quality, quantity becomes important or valuable only when it is coming along with quality. So, one prayer, one salat, two rak'ah, right? That one segment of salat that is accepted is better than thousands and thousands of rak'ats of salat that is not accepted. But if you have thousands and thousands of segments of salat that are accepted, of course, that's way better. So Islam was religion of quantity, quality, not the religion of quantity. The second suggestion or prescription of Ayatollah Kashmiri, this ustad, this revered teacher is this. He says, Ramadan is the spring of the Holy Quran. In this spring, choose one verse per day and then recite and contemplate on that verse until iftar. One verse. For example, on this day, just think of this, Ati Allah wa Ati ul Rasul. And repeat this to yourself. Or repeat a verse to yourself. Constantly, continuously until iftar. This is what Ayatollah Kashmiri says. He says, the result of it will be this. Hopefully, as iftar draws near, the true meaning of the verse will unveil itself for you. One verse, think of it. In that state of purity of fasting, try to reconnect with the Quran this way. This is a technique that an ordinary person like me is not telling you. It is a prescription and suggestion of a true scholar like Ayatollah Kashmiri who has gone through all the levels of this journey that we have ahead. It's been said about them that they have reached the highest levels of ma'rafatun nafs and irfan and mysticism. This is their suggestion. You're trying to memorize the Holy Quran? Very good. You're trying to read your jaws for the day? Perfect. Awesome. Great. But Ayatollah Kashmiri says this. Stick to one verse from the beginning of your fasting all the way to the end. He says, hopefully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the true meaning of that verse by the time of iftar. How kind is our creator? Third, he says, endear yourself to Allah. 
break your fast within your home as much as it's possible. Maybe that portion of his suggestion might not be as applicable to us who are living in the West as minorities. Keep that. But endear yourself. Sometimes this is what we do. As we hear the call of the Adhan, what do we do? We rush towards the table of the food. It says, like, and here we pray together first. But as you go to break your fast, there are du'as that have been recommended. One of them, as you have seen in Mafatihul Janan, is what? Allahumma laka sumtu. Oh Allah, I did make this fasting. I did this act of abstinence only for you. Allahumma laka sumtu. Laka sumtu. Wa ala rizqika aftartu. And on the provision and sustenance that you have blessed me with, I am breaking my fast. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And then istighfar. And then Ayatollah Kashmiri says this. He says, endear yourself. In fact, don't break. He says, allow, allow blessings of iftar to come to you. And then he says, when you are breaking your fast, endear yourself to Allah. Bring the fast, the first bite. See how, how romantic this scene is. Bring the first bite of iftar close to your mouth. And then, but do not eat it. Rather pray and supplicate. Tell Allah, ask Him. This way, I will only eat and break my fast if you answer my du'as and call. How romantic is this? Astaghfirullah Rabbi Atubu Alayhi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma ajjil waliyika al-Faraj. O Allah, forgive me and forgive my parents. Forgive me and forgive my offspring who will come after me. Make all of us to be beneficial for the cause of Islam and to all the Muslimin. Make du'as. Keep the first bite. Give yourself a little bit of time. Express that love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then open your, your fasting. Then break your fasting. He says... This state of yours will cause miracles. This is the words of Ayatollah Kishmiri. He says, doing this will cause miracles. Four, reflection. Ensure to spend a few minutes from enchanted hours of the fasting day in the best of worship, which is nothing but thought and reflection. Remember the Note from the life of Allama Tabo Taboi. Many of you know Shahid, Allama Shahid Sadr, Allama Muhammad Baghir Sadr. May Allah's blessing, nur, light, rahmah, and mercy be upon him. His books are still taught in houses, Islamic seminaries. And he's one of those personalities and figures that if he was alive today, he would have changed so many things. Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Baghir Sadr who became Shaheed by Saddam. One of his students I met in person in Qom, he's aged, he's in his 70s, and I asked him too, I said, what was the main attribute? If you want to describe the daily schedule of Shaheed Muhammad Baqir Sadr, how would you do it? He said the exact same thing that was said about Allama Tabo Taboi. He said he would have spent the majority of his time in thought and reflection. What do we think of these ulama? They have a table, a small desk on the ground, and it's filled with <clears throat> piles of books one after over the other, and then they're referring from this book to the other and so on and so forth or they are writing notes no it's thought and reflection 
thought and reflection is so important that a moment of it is better than 70 years of worship. It was thought and reflection that caused Hurribn Yazid Riyahi to take a moment and to just refrain from replying Imam Hussain back. Imam Hussain said, you are stopping me from my way. May your mother grieve for you. Amongst Arabs of that time, this wasn't a curse. Rather, it's, it's a way of expressing how bad your action is. May your mother come and see what type of son she has given birth to that stops the grandson of Prophet from proceeding his path. Guess what? Horebni Yazid he said, if your mother was to himself, if his mother was anyone but Lady Fatima to Zahra, I knew how to answer. But he stopped, he kept quiet, his head was down. What caused him to make that decision? Thought and reflection. So a blessing thought and reflection will change someone like this will drag him from the hellfire into the beauty of the heaven. A true thought and reflection which is blessed by the light of God will take you from the army of Yazid to the army of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Oh, Allah has given it to us. We have decided not to use it. We are doing everything not to use it. That intellect and wisdom that Allah SWT has given us with. He says, have some solitude with you and your Lord. Particularly think about your relationship with the Almighty in the hopes that the doors of a spiritual knowledge and self-awareness will open for you in this month of Ramadan. Number five. Long prostrations. Remember, in the Khutbah Sha'abaniya, he said, the Holy Prophet said, Tula Sujood. Ayatollah Kashmiri explains on that. He says, one of the most important states of servanthood to Allah is the one which the, pro the Prophet placed the great emphasis on, which is the long prostrations, sajda. Indeed, only Allah and his true friends know the amounts of blessings that are showered on the servant while he is in the state of prostration. Make sure to have at least one long prostration every day, inshallah, in these days of the month of Ramadan. As we approach the timing of Salat and the timing of Adhan, I would like to conclude the session, the lecture of tonight by remembering the Shuhada of Karbala, one of them, Hurribn Yazid al Riyahi, that we named. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Ya Ansar Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum. Ya Ansar Amir al السلام عليكم يا أنصار فاطمة الزهراء سيدة النساء العالمين السلام عليكم يا أنصار أبي محمد الهسان السلام عليكم أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته. For the health and well-being of our Imam of time, and for the hastening in his return and reappearance, please recite aloud salawat. Allah.
Still, we have two minutes for Adhan, so if you are prepared, you will do. Inshallah, two minutes is 49 today. Inshallah. Subhanallahi walhamdulillahi wa la ilaha illa Allah wa Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Ashhadu an Aliya Waliyullah Ashhadu an Amir al Mu'minin Aliya Hay ala Allah, 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 Allah,
سيدنا محمد وآله وسلم أشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلاة الله والسلام عليه أشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلاة الله والسلام أشهد أن علي ولي الله عليه الصلاة والسلام أشهد أن علي خجة الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر أستغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر حول الله بقوته أقوم وأقول بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد كذلك الله ربي الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر أستغفر الله ربي وأتوب الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وتقبل شفاعته وارفع درجته حول الله بقوته
الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد يا لطيف ارحم عبدك الكريم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم كل ولي كل حجة من حسن صلوات كاليه ولا بعي في هذا الساعة وفي كل الساعة ولي وعافزة وقاعدة وناصرة وذلين وإنا حتى تسكن خالي زكاة ووتمت وفيها سبيلا خطايا خطايا بانكها بمعلي أسراخ استغفر الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ذو الجلال والإكرام وأتوب إليه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم يا غفور يا رحيم أنت رب العظيم الذي ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير وهذا شهر عظمته وكرمته وشرفته وفضلته على الشهور وهو شهر الذي فرضت صيامه عليه وهو شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وجعلت فيه ليلة القدر وجعلتها خيرا من ألف شهر فيا زلمن ولا يمن عليك من علي بفكاك رغبتي من النار في من تمن عليه وأدخل الجنة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Was for Surah Fatiha for sponsors of tonight. Marumin, uh, all the Sajik family and all the Marum Mumineen and Muminat in this community and around the world. Shahada of Islam, please recite the Surah Fatiha and three times Surah class with the Raut Sarwat.
as you all know, we are going to take a break for the iftar and dinner, and inshallah get to get weather, uh, uh, get to get again uh, in main hall at 8:45 for Salat al Isha, followed by the wife Teta. Please, uh, just one humble request: uh, the plates, the iftar will be serving. Please use that same plate for the f dinner. Uh, and please cooperate with the volunteers, inshallah. We are here to serve you. Thank you. Jazakallah. Par Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salwat.
بر محمد و آل محمد صلوات اللهم صل علی محمد و آل محمد و عجل فرجهم ان شاء الله برادرز وی گون تو اسٹارٹ فار اذان العشاء آئی ریکویسٹ آل دی مومنین ار اسٹینڈنگ آؤٹ سائیڈ پلیز جوائن اس آن دی مین ہال سو وی کین ڈو صلوات العشاء فالوڈ بائی دی وائف تتا بر محمد و آل محمد صلوات أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن علي ولي الله أشهد أن علي حجة الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح هيا على الفلاح هيا على خير العمل هيا على خير العمل الله دو آل محمد سلوات خير العمل حي على خير العمل 
اقامت صلاح اقامت صلاح الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضال بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمد الله صلى على محمد وآل محمد سمع الله بمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر أستغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر الحمد لله وقوته أقوم وأقوم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضال بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد كذلك الله أكبر الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد رب أدخلني مدخل صدق وأخرجني مخرج صدق وجعلني من لدنك سلطانا مسيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجا الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سمع الله من حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقوم الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل الله الحمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر أستغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان الله سبحان الله 
الله أكبر بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعود الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي واتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وافعل بنا ما أنت أهله ولا تفعل بنا ما نحن أهله يا أهل التقوى والمغفرة يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إني أفتتح الثناء بحمدك وأنت مسدد للصواب بمنك وأيقنت أنك أنت أرحم الراحمين في موضع العفو والرحمة وأشد الماغبين في موضع النقال والنقمة وأعظم المتجبرين في موضع الكبرياء والعظمة اللهم أذنت لي في دعائك ومسألتك فاسمع يا سميع مدحتي وأجب يا رحيم دعوتي وأقل يا غفور عثرتي فكم يا إلهي من كربة قد فرجتها وهموم قد كشفتها وعثرة قد أطلتها ورحمة قد نشرتها وحلقة بلاء قد فككت الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا بلدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبر متكبيرا الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله الذي لا مضاد له في ملك ولا منازع له في أمر الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلق ولا شبيه له في عظمة الحمد لله الفاشي في الخلق أمره حمد الظاهر بالكرم مجد الباسط بالجود يده الذي لا تنقص خزائنه ولا تزيده كثرة العطاء إلا جودا وكرما إنه هو العزيز المنظر اللهم إني أسألك قليلا من كثير ما حاجة بي إليه عظيما وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سأل يسير اللهم إن عفوك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيئتي وسفحك عن ظلمي وسترك على قبيح عملي وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطئي وحمدي أطمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وأريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من إجابتك فسرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قسدت فيه إليك 
فإن أبطى عني عتبت بجأني عليك ولعل الذي أبطى عني هو خير لي لعلمك بعاقبة الأمور فلم أر مولا كريما أصبر على عبد لئيم منك علي يا رب إنك تدعوني فأولي عنك وتتحبب إلي فأتبوض إليك وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك كأن لي التطول عليك فلم يمنعك ذلك من الرحمة لي والإحصان إلي والتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فارحم عبدك الجاهل وجد علي بفضل إحصانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجر الفلك مسخر الرياح فالق الإصباح ديان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على عفوه بعد قدرته والحمد لله على طول أناته في غضب وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخال باسط الرزق فالق الإصباح للجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يقادل ولا شبيه يشاكل ولا ضير يقاضد قهر بعزة العزاء وتواضع لعظمة العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أنادي ويسر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصي ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة هنية قد أعطاني وعظيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبهجة منقة قد راني فأثني علي حامدا وأذكر مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يعتق حجابه ولا يغلق بابه ولا يرد صائله ولا يخيب آمله الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستنافين ويضع المستكبرين ويهلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين الحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك العاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستسرخين بعض حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعد السماء وسكانه وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسبح في غمراتها 
الحمد لله الذي هدانا لغاظه وما كنا لنتدي لولا ان هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويطعم ولا يطعم ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وأمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأزكى وأما وأتيب وأطهر وأسنى وأكثر ما صليت وبارك وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ومليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبى العظيم وصل على صديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على سبطي الرحمة وإمامي الغداء الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة وصلى على أمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف العاد المادي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم وصل على ولي أمرك القائم المؤمن والعدل المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين وأيدوا بروح القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل الداعي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلف في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبل بكن له دينه الذي ارتضيته له ابدله من بعد خوفه امنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيء اللهم اعزه واعزل به وانصره وانتصر به وانصر نصرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم اظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخلق 
اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وعلا وتذل بها النفاق وعلا وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما علفتنا من الحق فحملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا اللهم المن به شعثنا وشعب به صدعنا وارتق به فتقنا وكثر به قلتنا وعزز به ذلتنا وأغن به عائلنا واغذ به يا مغرمنا واجبر به فقرنا وسد به خلتنا ويسر به عسرنا وبيض به وجوهنا وفك به يسرنا وأنجح به طلبتنا وأنجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا وعطنا به سؤلنا وبلغنا به من الدنيا والآخرة أمالنا وعطنا به فوق رغبتنا يا خير المسؤولين يا خير اشف به صدورنا واذهب به غيظ قلوبنا واهدنا به لما اختلف فيه من الحق باذنك انك تهدي من تشاء الى صراط مستقيم وانصرنا به على عدوك وعدونا الى الحق امين اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا صلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وكثرة عدونا وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتضاور الزمان علينا فصل على محمد وآله وعنا على ذلك بفتح منك تعجلوا وبضر تكشفوا ونسر تعزوا وسلطان حق تظهروا ورحمة منك تجللنا وعافية منك تلبسنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا حسن ابن علي أيها المجتبى 
السلام عليك يا حسين ابن علي ايها الشهيد بكربلاء السلام عليك يا علي ابن الحسين زين العابدين السلام عليك يا محمد ابن علي ايها الباغر السلام عليك يا جعفر ابن محمد ايها الصادق السلام عليك يا موسى ابن جعفر ايها الكاظم السلام عليك يا علي ابن موسى ايها الرضا السلام عليك يا محمد ابن علي ايها الجواد السلام عليك يا علي ابن محمد ايها الهادي السلام عليك يا حسن ابن علي ايها الزكي العسكري السلام عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا حجة ابن الحسن يا صاحب الزمان أجل الله تعالى فرجاك وسهل الله لنا مخرجاك وجعلنا من خير أعوانك وأنصارك السلام عليكم يا أهل بيت النبوة جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته الله صلى